This is the GMK Tech N100 NUC. This is the GMK Tech G5 N97 Micro NUC. This tiny device is more powerful than its larger brother, and it's a fantastic emulation device, but it's not perfect. So let's take a look and fix a couple of the issues. Okay, pressing F7 while it's booting will get you to here, and then pressing Enter Setup will take you into the BIOS. Now here, the important thing to take a note of is that build date and time. If your build date and time are not newer or the same as this, you're running an older BIOS version. Now the BIOS version did not change when I upgraded, so the important thing to note here is that the build date and time on yours are equal to or or newer than what you're seeing here. Okay, we jump into advance next. And hardware monitor. By default, the fan is on PWM mode, so it increase and decrease as required. And um, I personally prefer to set this on a manual constant rather than a noise up, noise downs type. So I set it to software mode and I set it to 255, which is the max. I didn't have any issues with sound on this fan, and I, but I know others have, so it could be a case that I just got lucky with my fan maybe. But this is optional, really you don't have to do this, but it definitely helps a little case like this stay cool. Next thing to check under power is that you've got that 12 watt there set then you can go ahead and save an exit out of that. Next, we're booting to Windows. Now, um, initially I was doing some testing on this and I've been using Prime 95 and what you will see is, you will see that it's very easy to overheat this uh, little, little nuck. Um, the cooling, it, right here was running flat out, but you'll see it takes no time once I'm running that Prime test to overheat the device. And again, when I do stop running Prime, it does cool down very quick, so it dissipates the heat very quickly, but it's getting rather hot. And I did notice on some emulation, most emulation will be fine with, but the real high, especially when you're building um, the images for PS3 etc before they load for the first time that was just uh, maxing out and overheating this little device so after seeing this in Windows which is really the, the way I discovered that the thing had a definite issue with overheating if you do press it now again under normal scenarios I guess you'll be okay um, I was running Windows and doing my daily videos it does not overheat if this is a test designed to run this thing flat out and that's where it highlighted that it's pretty easy to overheat this device and it does cool down very quick but it will throttle and obviously if you're doing emulation you don't want that so what i did was i took the box apart and i applied some quality thermal paste uh, what did i apply mx4 thermal paste um, and you will see the results of that and as you will see it made a huge difference um, the paste that was on it was like putty I guess uh, must have been cheap but the MX4 made a drastic difference in that I cannot make this throttle anymore and I cannot overheat it. I mean it's set to 95 degrees and then it will throttle down but the actual temperature the Intel state is 105 max for the chip so it was within its limits where it is throttling down but you just don't want it and it seems quite easy to stop that from happening. I mean yeah obviously you do have to take the knuck apart to get there but the benefits as you can see here were excellent from something that overheated easily to something that no longer overheats. That's pretty amazing to me. And it shows you the importance of uh, the 
CPU pace that you use and how much of a difference it really can make to the temperatures. Um, as if you remember last time I ran this test, it, it um, took 16 seconds to start froiling, but here, boom, we're at one, one minute and we're still 77 degrees centigrade. So that's a worthwhile thing to do. Okay, we're going to stop this test. So to summarize, not overlooking the CPU throttling issue, and I have reached out to GMK Tech about this, the GMK Tech G5 is still a fantastic device. Priced at 179 US dollars, there isn't really much new that can touch it at that price point. Let's not forget that that price also includes 12 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, a 512 gigabyte M.2 drive, and a licensed version of Windows 11. Now, my primary reason for purchasing this device was for emulation, at which it simply excels. I've been disappointed with Raspberry Pi and the various RK3588 boards that I purchased before it, but this, this has finally satisfied my retro gaming needs and filled that gap. It's easily capable of emulating the PS2, Wii, GameCube, Switch, OG Xbox, and even 2D PS3 titles that I've tested. Most of those systems can also run upscaled. So all in all, a very tiny, compact, and extremely portable unit. What you can see running here is my own build of Badassera with Scott Bacana's amazing Hypermax V9 theme. All the titles you can see in the listings work on this device, and I will demo some of these in my next video. Until then, thanks for watching, and please hit like and subscribe, and leave your comments and questions and thoughts below.